Okay, this one's about the brush motor. Now the brush motor, there's still plenty of them out there. These are actually some of what originally was the motors we used. We didn't originally use induction motors, we used brush motors. And uh, they're still out there, they're in drill motors and things like that. They have some advantages. Uh, one is they'll run an AC or DC. Two, they will uh, have very high starting torque. When you turn them on, they really take off. Uh, from zero RPM, they have the maximum torque. So there's some advantages there. They're not the most efficient motor in the world. And they operate, well, it's actually pretty simple. Okay, with kind of a close up here, this is a field winding here. Uh, we've got an iron core, and then we have windings on it. And this is a series wound motor, so the power actually goes through the field and turns this into a magnet. Okay, the magnet has poles, north and south on it. The rotor, let me take that rotor out there so you can see it. Okay, there's the rotor. More accurately in this uh, uh, unit, it is actually called an armature. And you can, this is a commutator here. This is what transfers electricity from the brushes of this thing to these windings right in here. Now if you look closely you can see the windings have the end of their wires going to uh, these copper bars. And they go through a winding and they make a magnet out of the winding or out of the uh, this central core. It's just a, a uh, it's just simply a winding like any other winding would be. It makes uh, magnetism and it's concentrated with this uh, iron core. But what happens as this thing rotates, it switches to another part of this commutator. Another bar on here. And there's two brushes, one on either side. They're, they sit right across from each other like that. Okay, if you look at the end of this and these bars, and they're all insulated from each other, if I go say from this bar to this bar with my brush here and my other brush here, I'll give you an idea what those brushes look like. This is what the brush actually looks like and it rubs on there. Uh, as that power passes through here, that goes through a complete winding and makes a magnet out of one of these uh, one of these pieces that are separated here and then there's the one on the opposite side is one's north and one's south it makes a it makes a magnet say out of this one and the one on the other side and one's the north and one's the south well as soon as that commutator starts to move on the it moves to another bar on the armature which energizes a different winding and say let's say this was north here this is not energized as it rotates this becomes energized and this is north and so it continues as this thing rotates north 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 and if I take the stator winding here, it's always the same. Let's say it's north right here and south right there. Well, as that armature starts to rotate inside there, it's going to attract and then repulse as it goes past the poles on the field. So it attracts as it gets to it, then the commutator switches, it goes to the next one, and then it pulls again. And uh, it just begins rotating. It's probably simpler than the explanation I've given you. Uh, there are uh, illustrations of how this works, you know, on the internet, and they may be helpful. I'm going to put a link in here so that you can see an animation of how these things work. 
The only problem with the animation is they usually simply use two poles. Sometimes they'll put three in there, something like that. This is a multiple pole. These things only rotate a very short distance until they switch. And so it's a little different than the uh, illustrations you'll see. But just figure it that there's a number of potential electromagnets that become energized as the uh, commutator rotates and the brushes change which winding they are energizing. This is the common little drill type motor, other small type motors that need hard starting torque. They're not used for bigger stuff much anymore. The biggest I've ever seen is about three quarter horse and that was a very very old motor. They are uh, generally replaced by induction motors for larger applications. So that's the uh, the little brush motor. Uh, one thing I should say about these brush motors, the brushes themselves, it's these things, they wear out. That's one of the reasons uh, you have uh, that we've changed from these. They make sparks also as this thing's rotating, so it can't be in a uh, a volatile with any volatile gases around. So uh, it sparks and they wear out. So they're not going to last as long as most induction motors, but they do have high starting torque, not real high efficiency, uh, but used mostly in small applications.